The House Oversight and Accountability Committee will hold a hearing tomorrow to examine the government's response throughout the COVID pandemic. Now, you'll recall that as uh, casinos and liquor stores conducted business as usual, officials in many locations shuttered churches and schools while the Biden administration colluded with big tech to censor American voices, those that did not agree with what they were doing. Well, joining me now in studio to discuss this is Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey, who will actually testify before Congress tomorrow. General Bailey, welcome back to Washington Watch. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. All right. So we talked about this before, but new information has come forth. You're involved in a lawsuit, uh, the state of Missouri, along with uh, my good friend Jeff Landry, my attorney general in Louisiana. What's the latest that you've uncovered? Well, 20,000 documents have been turned over in discovery. We've taken numerous depositions, and we've uncovered this vast censorship enterprise emanating across the federal government. My fear is that that censorship enterprise has actually grown since we initiated this lawsuit. We've most recently been to court to ask for a preliminary injunction and class certification to put a stop to it, to erect a wall between tech and state to protect Americans' First Amendment rights to free speech. So... Oh. Let me be very clear on this, General. This is not speculation. This is information that you have in hand that shows that there was this collusion between the Biden administration, the federal government, and big tech to silence certain voices in America. That's absolutely right. Most often they silence conservative voices. The government was hard pressed in court when asked by the judge to identify a single liberal's voice that was suppressed. And the only example they had was one political opponent of the president. And what we have is email traffic from the White House digital director that indicates that President Biden himself is involved. But there was so much censorship going on across big tech social media at the behest of the federal government that the federal government actually had to consolidate that authority and that power in one agency to act as the nerve center for the censorship enterprise. This is unconstitutional. Absolutely. This is the worst First Amendment violation in this nation's history. And we're going to continue to fight to protect Americans' rights to free speech. What they do is they say that, well, we're just we're trying to suppress mis, dis, and mal information. But it's up to the people to have that conversation to determine what they do and don't believe, not federal bureaucrats. Think of this for a moment. I look at the Bible as objective truth, God's word. I guarantee there are officials in the Biden administration that don't agree with me. Right. So what if they call that mis, dis, or malinformation? And the worst part about it is we might ne never know our voices are being suppressed because there's no notification given to either the speakers who are posting on social media or the potential recipients of the, of the posts and the information that are then deprived of fair, free, fair, and honest debate. So, so, General, what's the remedy here? Well, the remedy is we want the court to certify the class as anyone whose uh, speech has been suppressed or censored on social media platforms. We want prospective relief, and we want a, a nationwide injunction to put a stop to it, to erect that wall between state and tech. So would this then, the evidence that that was being adhered to would be the dismantling of this infrastructure that's been in put in place at the federal level? That's absolutely necessary. We know that it starts in the Department of Homeland Security security, an agency that was created in the wake of 9-11 to protect Americans from foreign attack. It's now been weaponized against Americans to suppress our speech and a betrayal of our trust and values. A, a General, I, I just got to ask you this again. I mean, this is based upon evidence that you have in hand through discovery. Absolutely. We have emails from uh, April of 2021, where the White House digital director is demanding that big tech social media remove uh, a Tucker Carlson video, for instance. We have the email evidence to prove that. That's just one example in, in many, in the more than 20,000 documents that we have. And here's the scary thing. Big tech social media pushed back and said, well, this video doesn't actually violate our censorship policy. And, and the White House digital director said, we don't care. We want it down anyway. Jen Psaki, the former press secretary, has said from the White House podium that they are flagging posts yeah. that they want removed and that they know that big tech social media understands what they're trying to do. So based on the evidence that you have collected through this deposition or, and through um, the means that you've used, will any one individual be held accountable for violating the First Amendment rights of Americans? Absolutely. If there are violations of the First Amendment, we're going to fight to hold people accountable. And once we get that court order, we have no problem going back to court and moving for contempt proceedings against any federal official who wants to violate Americans' First Amendment right to free speech. So, well, some of those, I mean, obviously you mentioned Tucker Carlson, and I'm sure there's 
thousands of other conservative names that uh, have appeared in there. Wouldn't be surprised to see Washington watch in the list. Will those individuals who have been aggrieved by particular members of the Biden administration be able to take legal action against them? That's certainly something worth looking at and that those individuals are going to want to pursue. We're looking at prospective relief because we want to put a stop to it to protect the next election cycle. But, but I think part of preventative is going back to ensure that those who did it were held accountable and, and quite frankly, punished. I mean, this is something that is fundamental to the United States of America, to making us that exceptional country, is that we can have differences of opinion, and, but we have the freedom to express it. That's absolutely right. The remedy in this nation for disfavored speech has always been counter speech, not government right. censorship. My concern has always been that when you suppress speech, you end up with events like January the 6th because people are frustrated and they act out of frustration. That's absolutely right. It's, it erodes trust and confidence in our governmental institutions when the government lies to us and, and suppresses our free, fair and open debate. And you see outbursts of, of, of other forms of, of political activity when we can't have that speech. Well, General, unfortunately, we are out of time, and uh, well, I could talk about this all hour long, but we'll be following your testimony tomorrow, and I'm sure we will be following up in the days ahead. Look forward to it. Thank you. General Bailey, thanks so much for being with us.